In this video, we're going to run our code and we're going to see the HTTP request in the HTTP context object. In this diagram, you have seen that the Castro server is responsible to do something. So the Castro server is the HTTP server. So one of its responsibility is to translate the HTTP request, which is a string. Right? You consider that as a string. So Castro server needs to convert the string into a object. And in the ASP.NET Core, the type of that object is the HTTP context. We scroll up here to this detailed diagram here and see that this step is the first step. This is performed by the Castro server, which is to translate the request to HTTP context. And we're going to see that in this video. So let's go to Visual Studio. Here, we talk about this one. This is the only visible middleware component here. But this one does not use a HTTP context. So we need to change to use a different methods. In the web application instance here, there's different methods. One of them is called run. And this run has different signatures here, different overloads. This one takes a delegate, and we're going to use this one. The delegate, we can use a Lambda expression to do it, but then it takes a HTTP context as a parameter, which means that the Castro server was able to convert the HTTP request into this context object before this delegate is even executed. Because it was able to do that before, so when this delegate is triggered, it's able to pass this context object to this delegate. And we can use the context within the delegate. So if we see context, then you can see that we can access the request object right here. And in the request object, let's actually go back to our diagram first. In here, you can see that this is the syntax, the method, and we have URL, we have version, and we have headers, and we have body. That's, this is the different parts. This is the anatomy of our HTTP request. So keep that in mind. First one is method, second one is URL. So let's go over here. We should be able to see, find all of that in our request object here. Otherwise, Cacher server didn't do its job well. So let's do request dot. And then you can see this pass. This pass actually corresponds to the URL. And then you can see we have a method. So this method corresponds to the method in the HTTP request. And after the method and the pass, we see the headers. Okay, so the headers are, is actually a dictionary. So this dictionary contains a key value pair. And after that, you can see we have body. Now, of course, if we scroll down, we can see content, length, content type. So these are commonly used headers. That's why they have a specific property. But you can actually find the content length and content type inside the headers dictionary as well, okay? as well as cookies. Form as well. Form is actually inside the body. We're going to talk about that later. Okay, so you can see all of this. So what I want to do in this video is I'm going to output all of this, the path, the method, headers in, onto the page. So in order to do that, we're going to actually use the HTTP response object. We haven't talked about that, but we can start using it. We're going to say context dot the response dot, and then we can say write async. So this is going to output data to the response object. And then when the response is sent to the browser, the browser is then able to display the result in the browser. So in this case, we are going to write some string. And let's say the method is, and then we use string interpolation here. Let's say context.request.method. And we're going to do a character return. Okay. And I'm going to write next line. So here, I'm going to say the URL is, and again, I'm going to say context.request dot path. And then we're going to write all of the headers. So for the headers, I'm going to do a for each loop. So I'm going to say key in headers dot keys. And then I'm going to say headers. So, but before that, I'm going to just write something like this. I'm going to say headers. And then I'm going to add a character return again. So here, I'm going to output all of the headers. And I'm going to say context dot request. So first part is the key. So I don't need to get it from there. I can just use the key from right here. And then I'm going to say headers and then use the key as the index here. 
right? So we're outputting all of that. And of course, the body is always empty in this case. Now you see this red squeeze line. That's because we're using the async method without using async and await keyword. So we can add that in front of and let's say await, and await, await, await. All right, so the red squeeze line is gone. And let's try to run this. Okay, so we got our result here. The method is a get method. The URL is slash, which indicates this is the root. Okay, and then we don't have any headers. And then we have headers here, date, server, transform, encoding, but the value is not output correctly. And the reason why it's not displayed correctly is because we are using response.headers instead of request.headers. So we have to loop through request headers because that's what we want. So let's see request.headers.keys. And then here we are using request object correctly. That's why we were not able to see the headers. So let's run it again. And we should be able to see all of headers here. So again, method is get URL is the root. And we have all of the headers. So for accept, this is the value. For connection, this is the value. For host, this is the value. And this is the user agent accepting encoding, accepted natural language, and all of the rest of the headers that the browser sent to the server. When we use the run method, we don't care about the mapping. All of the requests will go through this run method. It goes through this middleware component that is created by this run method. So for example, instead of just go to root, I can go to any place. For example, I can go to employees, although I don't have it yet. But when I go to employees, it's gonna still run the same thing. Right? This is gonna be triggered. So we're gonna talk about basic routing in future lessons. But right now, you notice that no matter which URL you are going, I can go to any valid URLs and I'm going to get the same result. That's because if you send a request to the server, this middleware component is going to be used here. And then all of the code is being run. And we're just outputting using the response object, okay, the right async method in the response object. Okay, so in this lesson, you've learned to, to actually see the different parts of the HTTP request in the HTTP context object. We have our method, we have our path, we have our headers. And of course, we have our HTTP request body, but the body is empty. And we're going to talk about the body when we talk about the post method, the put method, and the patch method in future lessons. Okay, this is all I'm going to talk about in this video. If any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you 